This is the Chester County Real Estate Podcast, bringing you the info you need to make your next move a great one. This show is brought to you by Remax Ace Realty. For show notes and links, go to acerealtypa.com slash podcast. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Chester County Real Estate Podcast. This is the show that gives you the information that you need to make your next move a great one. And this week, we uh, have a very special episode sitting down with Renzo, broker here at Remax Ace Realty, and we're going over some of the numbers to kind of look at what the market has been doing this uh, this past year, uh, and see where we kind of ended the year out when, when, as far as the housing market here in Chester County. So, um, thanks for coming on, man. Sure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So we were just talking a little bit about the market st- statistics that we pulled up, and I, you know, typically. At the at the beginning of each month, I look at the previous month and look at the year over year differences. So we put up a chart. Um, some of the statistics, statistics were hard to find because it was, you know, not a lot of people working over the holidays. <laughs> so I think we. Uh, so I kind of had to pull up some of this on my own as opposed to finding the the neat the fancy charts that the realtor association would put out um but basically i took start went back to this last this past december went back 12 months to last december december 2021 um and then also pulled in november 2021 and november 2022 so that's what you're looking at there um and if uh if there should be a link i'm going to put this information in if uh probably on the website so chestercountypodcast.com uh we'll uh, we'll add this on there so if anyone wants to go back and look at this chart that i pulled up and s- check my information see where we got uh we can take a look um but just to kind of run down real quick some of what we're looking at here um you were just talking about how you noticed that there were more units sold in december than went on the market yes uh so in december 2022 here it says now it is weird. We don't have a calculation for the actual inventory or end of month inventory or the uh, months of inventory, but it says that in 2022, we had 258 units listed um, and 394 units sold. So that's a pretty significant amount. Um but it's just kind of like going through some of our inventory, it looks like. Uh, in December, t- so in December 2021, so last year at this time, we had 430 units so, uh, listed. So we have significantly less units listed this year. As far as the units sold, you know, the numbers were similar. The percentages were similar. So last Dece- so December 2021, we had 685. This past this past December, 394. So we've we're seeing about what 25 percent drop there. Yeah, about that. Um, Close to a third. So we're seeing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So there's a little bit of a drop in the unit. Well, so there's what 25 to 33 percent. You know, thirty percent drop, but with the units sold. But if you're looking at the units listed, going from four thirty to two fifty eight, that's right around there too. Right, about a third. About a third. So one thing that you know is what one thing that we are noticing that we haven't seen in the past couple of years is that we're seeing the market steep. I think we're seeing a steeper decline for the winter market. Uh, you mean an activity? Yes. So you know, for as long as I've been in real estate, it's always been, it's always been uh, summer or, or spring and fall were the highest, the most active times a year, right. and then summer and winter were the lowest. Uh, last couple of years, it seemed like it kind of went straight through into the winter, and it just felt like activity wasn't really dying down because there was just such a backlog of buyers who were looking to buy. Yeah, interesting. Um, Yeah, I would agree. It did seem to slow down some activity. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot with the mortgage rates going up. Yeah, I know that had a lot to do with it. But the interesting thing is we're still seeing 
more units sold than, than came on the market, mm-hmm. both November and December. So the other two things that um, I've, I've been looking at, and I've kind of been watching this the last couple months, is that the median sold price has been staying the same. And actually looking at this, it's actually gone up a little bit. Well, so if you look at the median sold price for December 2021, then that that's sitting there at, let's see here, 422000 right? Yep. If you look at the median sold price for December 2022, now we're looking at 433,000. So, actually seeing that go up, but the activity go down means that there's less buyer activity, but there's also but there's less selling competition. Right. Would you say? Yeah. Yeah. So, technically supply and demand is similar. Right. So when supply and demand are at that equilibrium, we're going to see prices remain stable, basically. So supply and demand are moving at the same at, at the same rate, in the same ratio. Now, as far as what you've been hearing and seeing kind of like from the ground level, is that pretty similar? Um, yeah, that's... It's it's still a pretty good mm-hmm. seller's market mm-hmm. in a lot of areas. Yeah, definitely still seeing some some over ask and multiple offer situations. Yeah, I yep. think I think what I've what I'm hearing is it's a little bit it's things aren't selling as quickly, but they're still selling, um, and the lack of the buyers leaving the market. Well, I would say the lack of new listings is kind of keeping it stable. Uh, so last week we were talking to, well, I was talking to Bobby, who you know is a listing agent and does a lot of listings. And he was saying that it was, I think what he was saying was that back in the spring, he was telling people, hey, let's list it a little bit over because there was such a frenzy over every single listing that was going on. Now he's telling people, hey, we're going to have to list this a little bit more accordingly to get people interested in there because you're appealing to a smaller pool of buyers. Uh, I think that's kind of getting reflected here in the data because it just shows that it's a little bit more competitive, but prices and uh, the other thing too is days of market is relatively similar. You know, kind of, I don't want to say the same, but it is, they're consistent. So if we look at the average or the median I should find out if this is average or median. It doesn't say on this report, but it says the days of market in December 2021 was 24, and in 2022 it was 25. It's about the same. So, sorry, I jumped all over there. <laughs> you probably, if you, I, I didn't know if you were uh, about to say something, and then I kind of switched topics a little quickly. That's interesting. No, um... No, it's just interesting how similar everything the numbers are as far as the numbers are, but it just doesn't feel similar. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing too is that from an agent standpoint, so we, you know, on this show we try to we try to focus on the home buyers, the home sellers, the consumers, but we're also talking to agents all day long. From the agent standpoint, that drop of activity, they're especially going to see it. Right. So a lot of times when someone says, oh, how's the market? And a real estate agent responds, oh, it's rough. Oh, things are dropping. Oh, things are, you know, there, there's there's not as many buyers out there. There's not as many listings out of there. out there. They're sometimes referring to their personal experience. So why do they have less listings? Why are there less thing, less buyers? Why are there less deals going on? They might see their production levels go down. And for them, it's not, you know, it feels like the market's not good. And but when you actually look at the data from a seller standpoint, well, it's, it's not. It's not good, but it it's not it's not any better, not any worse it's from not, individual sellers. Yeah. Right. So, we were talking a little bit about what this will look like over the next couple months too, and I don't like trying to tell the future. Right. <laughs> um, 
Uh, however, we were kind of speculating that, you know, we, we've been expecting interest rates to go up and up and up. But interest rates are already have, like, they have gone up. Right. So the question is, are we going, like, and what would it look like if interest rates went up for the spring market? And what would it look like if they went down? Yeah, I I think if- L- let's put out like a couple different scenarios because, like I said, I don't want to say like, oh, interest rates are definitely going down in the spring because it's really hard to say. Um, I think if they stay flat, we'll continue to see less supply and less demand, um, but. Less supply and less. Well, if they're less, if they're flat, we'll we'll continue to see less of both. Okay, but uh, I think the ratio will still maintain. Mm-hmm. So I, I think we'll stay stable. Prices will stay stable. Mm-hmm. It'll just be less activity. Mm-hmm. Less activity than compared to twenty twenty one. I. I guess we could go back and check, but I've always compared, like, this amount of activity to, like, 2019. That's Mm. what I feel is is happening. Um, But if rates go down, then uh, I think we're going to start another um, supply crunch cycle. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I don't think builders have been able to catch up to the, right. to the demand. Um, yeah, especially especially in this area. Like, I just don't yeah. see, and I, I know I've, I say this all the time, but in 2007, 2008, you couldn't drive down the road without seeing a new townhome, uh, con- new, new construction of, of entry-level, first-time home buyer, you know, Price townhomes. At the time, it was basically two hundred thousand dollars for a basic uh, townhome. Because I remember the signs; they said townhomes in like the high, you know, ones or low twos or or something like that. New construction. Um, now it's like, yeah, there's there's some nice neighborhoods, but you like there's new construction going on. But you're looking at like, I feel like ten to twenty units, and they're all north of a million dollars. Or if they're townhomes five six hundred thousand dollars so we're not seeing the new construction for the lower end of the market the the new home buyers the necessarily even some of the move up buyers i mean the new construction's mostly luxury market yeah it I, seems I like agree. i don't, I don't yeah. have the data it just kind of seems like it's, here in chester county that seems to that be way. yeah what so, we're seeing uh, i think we're also seeing we we always saw this mm-hmm. like a, a house that needed work um, would sell for less and sit on the market longer mm-hmm. but I think that's becoming more more important more prominent mm-hmm. um, and I think that's because of labor and material prices it costs so much to re- to rehab a house to do any kind of upgrading Mm -hmm. that the consumer knows this so they're willing to spend the money on something that's already done okay and it's not just the amount of money that it costs it's so much hassle anymore uh and it's it's because uh, the there's a there's a shortage of of labor for that kind of Mm -hmm. uh, vocation and at least in this area, now it might not be true all over the country, but mm-hmm. in this area, um, the houses you're seeing that are sitting are probably in need of some TLC. Okay. And I mean that was also true in 2019. If if you put up a house that uh, was well maintained and nicely updated, mm-hmm. you were seeing multiple offers and a quick sale. Mm-hmm. I think it's just more so now, which makes sense. So, but the yeah, so so we're still seeing so so I guess the way it kind of your gut feeling is we're kind of back to 2019 levels because the thing about 2019 is that it was still a great market, right? Yeah, um, it just wasn't completely nuts, 
Right. I would say 17 to 19, it was very strong. It was a strong market. It was solid. After things opened up after the lockdown, things got a little out of hand. Yeah, frenzy right. was a term that I was using a lot. <laughs> Buyer frenzies. However, I mean, I would say it was probably like come maybe 2016 is when the market really came back. 2014 was getting there. 2016, it really, really came back, really got a lot stronger. People started moving out. Um, but you could still, you could still negotiate. You could still get a home inspection. Maybe not a home sale contingency. Yeah, but right. I remember, you know, 2020, 2021, where you couldn't even get a deal done with a home inspection on there. Um, that was that was that was tough. That was tough for for buyers, and it wasn't necessarily great for for sellers either. Um, I mean, they were they were making money, but it was it was it would be instead of like. A couple weeks of mild stress it was like a couple day, days of high stress so having people freaking out and you know buyers contacting the sellers directly begging them and you know pleading with them in the in the uh, offer letters and stuff like that I mean it's 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 good if you're you know when you're at closing as that seller but it was creating a lot of stress I feel like too yeah there were some like outside the box type of stuff happening mm -hmm. with offers so all right well cool yeah i hope uh i mean i'm hoping that this the spring we see a strong market but not not insane um and right now the way the data is looking it's it 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 really isn't as bad as some people think from a seller from a seller standpoint um with that median price being higher than it was this time last year um and the days of market being similar it's still you know not a bad time to sell i would say no i'd say that too um prices are good uh, and market in chester county stable is considered stable mm -hmm. it's it might not be that might not be true for the whole country i mean there are pockets mm -hmm. um, certain states where Price appreciation has been twice what it was here in Chester County, if you can imagine that. Mm -hmm. um, and those areas might be seeing some price reductions, but we're still holding up. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So if someone is interested in selling and buying, what's the? how can they contact us here? Uh, the best way is to call the office. 484-712-0009. Correct. Yeah. And then uh, also um, you can check us out either acerealdpa.com or you can check out this uh, show at chestercountypodcast.com and then you can also contact us there as well. So great. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Renzo. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for listening. This has been the Chester County Real Estate Podcast, brought to you by REMAX Ace Realty, serving buyers and sellers in the Chester County area. Subscribe for new episodes at acerealtypa.com slash podcast. And you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and wherever podcasts are found. This episode is brought to you by REMAX Ace Realty in Downingtown, PA. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home, we have a real estate expert for you. Search for homes or contact an agent at acerealtypa.com.